dear audience, let me present my PhD topic, which is about teledentistry in the diagnosis of oral lesions. I'm Esther Ruchlin and I work in the Department of Community Dentistry and my vision is to establish a teledentistry application in the future and my mission is to use teledentistry in uh, everyday uh, dental, primary dental health care uh, for the diagnosis of oral lesions. Uh, in order to uh, make my vision and mission, I have these uh, following specific goals. My first one is a, a meta-analysis with the title uh, Teledentistry, a future solution in the diagnosis of oral lesions. I am very happy, happy to, to announce that uh, recently my first manuscript was uh, accepted. But uh, let me talk about the background right now. Healthcare has changed a lot during the pandemic. However, telemedicine could help in various fields. For example, in triage and documentations. Uh, in Hungary, in the community dentistry field, uh, we see on this diagram that the non-urgent cases had a decrease uh, during the lockdown. Uh, however, these patients needed some kind of uh, alternative solution. So in this case, also teledentistry could help them. Uh, the main risk factors for oral cancer are uh, alcohol consumption, um, smoking and the beta chewing, which you can see on the pictures, uh, which is really common uh, in the Far East. It means that also the prevalence of oral cancer is rising, mainly in Far East, well, they chew this beta. Uh, however, Hungary is, uh, is leading as well in Europe in the prevalence of uh, oral cancer. Uh, to sum up, uh, teledentistry uh, is a new developing uh, field and uh, we would need an early diagnosis for uh, these premalignant lesions in order to prevent the worsening to oral cancer. Teledentistry could also help in uh, access to care and also less referral decision would be uh, made with these tools uh, to special care. Uh, so I formed uh, my clinical question. Uh, is it possible to use teledentistry tools for diagnosing oral lesions? Uh, I made my systematic search and uh, we read it in uh, uh, November. We found one more eligible article, so we ended up with 10 articles in the meta-analysis. Uh, as I am conducting a uh, diagnostic uh, meta-analysis, we needed diagnostic accuracy measures, uh, which means that uh, there is a gold standard, uh, which is clinical oral examination in uh, my case. And uh, we, we had a, an index test, which is a teledentistry tools, uh, which is image-based uh, in my meta-analysis. So we can see that, uh, for example, uh, the carcinoma is uh, well diagnosed by teledentistry tools and with the uh, oral uh, examination. However, for example, Kylitis actinica, which is a premalignant lesion, was mistaken to hemangioma uh, in case of teledentistry. Uh, so we would like to know uh, how many cases are misdiagnosed here with the false negative and also here in the false positive uh, side. Uh, my first outcome is about the diagnosis of the presence of uh, any kind of oral lesions in the mouse. Uh, we found 0 0.92 uh, for the sensitivity and 0.93 uh, for the specificity, uh, meaning that uh, image-based teledentistry tools uh, can be a good substitution for the diagnosis of the presence of any oral lesions in the mouse. Uh, my main outcome uh, is about uh, diagnosing oral premalignant or malignant lesions in the mouse. Uh, we made a two-dimensional analysis, which you can see on the right, uh, showing the sensitivity uh, here and the one minus specificity uh, in the head of the arrow with a relative small confidence interval. Uh, with a sensitivity of 0 0.92 and a specificity of 0 0.98, uh, we can say that this would be a good alternative in the future. Uh, 
this data uh, can be shown in the uh, one-dimensional forest plot analysis as well, uh, meaning that uh, if we have 100 premalignant or malignant lesions, 92 are well diagnosed um, with the teledentistry tools. And uh, also, if I have uh, 100 uh, non-malignant oral lesion, then 99 out of them are well said that, that uh, those lesions are true negative. We made a sensitivity running analysis uh, two-dimensionally, which means that in case of uh, two um, experts that made uh, the teledental examination, we randomly chose one. In this sensitivity running, we chose the exact other to see if the examiner, if the outcome depends on the ex examiner or not. Uh, so in this case, we found that the sensitivity is 0.95 and the specificity specificity is 0.98, meaning that it is even better than my, our uh, main outcome. Uh, as the strengths of this uh, study, uh, the diagnosis was made only by experts. However, there is a huge heterogeneity of the me uh, used methodologies. As a conclusion, teledentistry might be a substitution for face-to-face -face dental visits in the face of oral medicine. Uh, my implication for practice would be a photo shooting protocol and the implication for research is to change the reference standard from cl clinical oral examination to biopsy. My second project is about the effect of oral healthcare prevention program for the post-stroke inpatient oral hygiene. Uh, we know that uh, stroke is the single largest cause of disability all around the world. However, there is no uh, such a protocol for the prevention and the, uh, the treatment in the dental field. Uh, the dental team is uh, not well trained to treat these uh, patients, nor the nurses are trained um, to maintain the good oral uh, hygiene for these patients. Uh, living with disability can, uh, uh, can cause uh, less uh, personal hygiene, meaning that uh, oral hygiene uh, decreases as well. However, we could uh, help uh, inpatient and also uh, outpatient uh, with disability with these personalized uh, toothbrushes, for example, to maintain acceptable oral hygiene in the future as well. So my aim is to uh, prevent the worsening of oral hygiene uh, and to prevent tooth loss uh, in these uh, patients. So my clinical question is, is there a significant difference in oral health status in post-stroke patients if they receive oral health care prevention program? Uh, and my clinical implication uh, is to prevent tooth loss and pneumonia uh, in these patients and to improve their quality of life. Uh, so I made my systematic search two times because we, we changed the search query recently. And, um, and uh, we would like to make the statistical uh, analysis based on uh, two fields. The first one will be oral health indices, which is plaque index and gingival index. And the other one, which we thought uh, could be interesting, is the opportunistic pathogens uh, in the oral cavity, meaning yeast, uh, aerobic gram-negative gram bacilli, and also Staphylococcus aureus, which can ha have a huge impact on, uh, on uh, further uh, infections. Uh, so I have the, a huge heterogeneity of the outcomes because every single uh, study wants to measure uh, different, uh, uh, different outcomes. So that's why we are a little bit struggling with the statistical analysis. But uh, right now I am in the phase of risk of bias assessment and uh, I'm waiting for my uh, real analysis, and I plan to finish this uh, manuscript by March. So here are my two, um, two projects again, and I would like to thank you for your attention with this quote. It always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you.
Thank you. So this is the second paper what we see is already accepted. And actually both of them are led by my co-chair. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, this will happen with the others too, I'm quite sure. All right, uh, with your first project, um, so it went through, and actually you got reasonable data, but you conclude that more studies are needed, and probably this should be introduced to clinical practice. Is there any chance that you, I mean, your department, some of us, I mean, gets into this real business on this? I can ask for the second topic too, but the first one is already published, so <laughs> please yeah. accept. Well, I really hope that uh, not only during my PhD time, but in the future, we can really establish something, some kind of application where at least dentists could send some photos of uh, oral lesions. So in this case, there wouldn't be as many references to special care as we have right now at our, uh, at our department, because there is a huge number of cases. And I think with this um, uh, pre-triage system, let's say, uh, uh, we could prevent this uh, overwhelming uh, number of, uh, of people that are coming to the uh, Department of Oral Medicine. And also, I mean, in Hungary, there are areas when, I mean, in Nograd, for example, I mean, that, I mean, there is an extreme shortage of dentists. So, I mean, I mean to solve this, really, I, I, I think, I mean, I'm just an outsider in, on this, but I, that, that, that's quite, quite clear that this could be the solution, yes. actually, not uh, only for dentistry. Yes, exactly, and we would like to establish something that could be used by, by everyday people or like uh, primary dentists, so not with the big camera, with the big lenses that the professionals use, but it, it should be available to all the people from Hungary. Thank you for the nice, nice presentation. I just simply want to ask, uh, have you ever thought about uh, human resources? And uh, how many person you, you would need for this kind of uh, project? Just, just have you ever uh, think about it? To establish an application or to have the... To, to take control of this application because the fact that doing a program, the program will work. But uh, as I understand, it will need specialists. Yes. And how many specialists you expect that will need it and would need? <laughs> well, I think there is a sor shortage of specialists. Um, and shortage of uh, dentists as well. Uh, however, we, we plan to include uh, artificial intelligence with this uh, system. So if anybody sends a photo, or there is a photo of an oral lesion, let's say, or of the oral mucosa, then we could rely on artificial intelligence at least to have some pre-diagnosis let's say i wouldn't say a diagnosis but a pre-diagnosis yeah yeah congratulations first uh, i would ask about the sensitivity and the specificity specificity of the tendency uh, you mentioned that the interval is uh, is narrow and i just wonder that the the methodology uh, i mean the the tools is uh, differ between the different um, articles, and uh, what's the explanation? I guess there are common points between the tools, but can you please explain? Yes, of course. Thank you, Thank you for the, your question. In the PICO, it is visible that uh, I selected a relatively uh, huge amount of articles with the index test as online consultation. It is uh, image-based consultation always, not a survey, not a telephone consultation. There has to be an image or a video call or whatever that uh, in what a tele you, um, with the teledentistry, somebody can see the lesion or the non-lesion non uh, place. 
depends on the diagnosis depends on the image quality for sure. There is article that uh, measures it. Uh, however, we got a relatively small confidence interval uh, because in these pictures they could see if there is a non-malignant lesion or a malignant lesion or a premalignant lesion because these have a huge difference in the as they look. So I think this can be the cause.